Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk a little bit more advanced about customizing your fixed bike plate and different modifications you can make to get better outcomes and to do more than just fixed vertical in your case. Now, first of all, this is going to be a very advanced um, lecture, a very advanced discussion. It is not going to make sense unless you've either taken our phase one course and our straight wire course, which can be available at Street Smile Solutions. You go to courses, they're very affordable. They're like less than $20 per unit of CE. They're like crazy affordable. Or you've watched all of our playlists um, on our YouTube channel um, for both straight wire, braces, um, and phase one. So unless you've done all that, I would highly recommend not listening to this video. Um, also, you need to watch our Seth playlist. Um, the Seth information is in both of our courses. So in a nutshell, I'm not trying to push you on our courses. I'm just saying that all that information that's in the courses is also free in the YouTube channel. It's just really not necessarily in a logical order because that's not how uh, YouTube does things. So, um, and you don't get CE. So one or the other, um, take the time to watch all those playlists, which will probably take you, I don't know. The nice thing about the course is that I extract the most important information and I put it in a logical order. If you actually just click through the whole playlist, it'll probably be about a hundred hours. So it's going to be a little while. But yeah, whatever works for you. Anyways, okay, so I'm gonna assume that you've already watched the playlist or taken the courses as I finish this conversation. So obviously you guys know what a fixed bite plate is for. You can use it before braces, you can use it before aligners cases, um, you can use it with braces, you can't use it with aligners cases. It is an incredible way to improve vertical in your case. If you haven't figured out what your vertical issue is, remember not all vertical issues are extruded incisors, upper or lower. They could be a curve of speed issue, they could be under erupted molars and premolars. So that's why you need that Ceph and those Ceph numbers to know the problem. Sometimes I can look at the case and just look at the smile line and look at the shape of the face and I kind of already know what I need, but it's always a great idea to go ahead and confirm it and get actual numbers. That's what orthodontists do um, just to create your pre and plan. It always cracks me up when you're sending a case through Invisalign or ClearCorrect or SureSmile and y'all are just doing what the techs say. You're like, oh, there's a deep bite. Well, I'll intrude incisors. Well, how do you know that's the cause of the deep bite? Is that is over erupted in, did you get a Seth? Because unless you tell these technicians what you want, that's probably what they're going to do. And it's, it could make the patient look really bad, like really screw them up, like mess up their teeth. And that's not on them. That's on you for not treatment planning properly. So that's where all this comes into play. Okay. So let's say we decided to do some type of fixed bite plate, but now there's extra customizations you could do. And I'm not a lab technician, never have, uh, not interested, but I like my lab technicians. So I invite any lab technicians to weigh in on this conversation. If you work for an orthodontic lab, uh, I know some of you do follow me, um, or if you guys know a lot more about bite plates than I do, you can, you can chime in. So this is kind of your standard bite plate. It's some acrylic, it's soldered to some bands. Now you can get 3D printed bands. That's pretty cool. Um, generally, you're gonna take a scan and then it's gonna come back. I don't fit bands anymore. What, why? That's, that's a complete waste of shipping material, alginate. Just take a scan have them you know digitally size it throw the spacers in a few days before just to make sure they're comfortable assuming there's not an open contact and drop the sucker in shouldn't be a problem shouldn't be any adjustment needed if there is someone did something wrong and have it remade um, the 3d printed brands they're saying that you do not have to drop spacers in not sure how durable they are but um, i definitely want to check one out um, you can also make your fixed bite plate into an expander. So it's a combination of plants. These are two different shelves. They're gonna open up. You know, they're gonna part like the Red Sea once you start turning and cranking. It's pretty sweet. I mean, I love doing that. If I know that I have crowding and a super deep bite, I wanna go ahead and do that. Um, you can also do something called an incline bite plate, which is where your bite plate almost has like a, like a ski, ski ramp. Um, so that it encourages in the slight class two situation, encourages a patient to slide forward. Um, a proprietary name for that appliance, if you put a groove on it, is called a Rickinator. R-I-C-K-A-N-A-T-O-R. Rickinator. I don't make these things up. Some name named Rick made that up. That is an incline bike plate with a groove, like, um, like here where they make a groove. So there's a little slot for you to rest your teeth in. So instead of just sliding around, you have a place to lock it in. So it almost makes it like MA. It's like a really poor man's MA. Um, before, before there was MA, that's how we used to do things with braces. We still do. It works pretty well. I mean, if the patient actually sticks their teeth in it. Um, let's see what else. 
watch out if you're using fixed bite plates because if you're doing braces at the same time, depends on the movements, they're often not gonna move because the bite plate is butted up against it. So it really depends on the movements. If it's forward, sometimes they will. If it's back, they usually won't. So just keep that in mind. So sometimes it doesn't make sense to put braces on. Also watch out with fixed bite plates. Sometimes the pressure of the plastic can cause the teeth to splay a little bit out. Not a big deal. You're gonna fix it in braces anyways, but just keep that in mind. So these are just some of the modifications that I can think of in a nutshell. Um, be careful when you trim the plastic back on bite plates. Um, you got to check the occlusion first because you don't want to trim back some place where they're biting because that kind of defeats the whole purpose. If you trim back too much here, you're going to create a groove here um, and the patient's going to bite in it and then they're not going to be biting on the plate, which is then it just doesn't stop working. So, um, but yeah, check it out. Lots of customizations and modifications on a fixed bite plate. Oh yes, and I always put buckle tubes on my bite plates. All right, thank you.